I have a picture of a painting before you done by Don Stone. He lived from 1929 to 2015. He was an American Impressionist painter, a commercial artist, and a cartoonist for the Boston Post. This painting is entitled Moonrise. You'll notice that we have clouds um, with blue-gray skies, and the clouds have limited definition there. And we have some glow from the moon uh, onto the clouds and the waves. Uh, there is a pounding surf that's hitting a rocky shore, and the moon is partially obscured by a wave. Uh, the moonlight glimmers on the water, and there is an undulating surf with yellow grays, blue grays, violet grays, and he uses bold brush strokes. I think that this is not going to be an easy painting, um, but let's give it a try. Let's get started. I pre-primed our canvas with gesso, uh, two coats, and then I went back and did an underpainting. I have a lighter blue-gray at the top, a uh, darker blue-gray, I have a yellow-gray, and then a violet-gray. And the reason I went with this is as I looked at the picture closely, I noticed that he had um, these colors uh, in his painting. So I thought I would, and in these areas. So I thought I would put those as an under start painting. So that'll some yellow be showing where the moon area is. As you'll notice that the uh, area will be lighter surrounding the moon uh, than the other areas of the sky. I'm doing some blending here so that there's not an abrupt um, difference between where the lighter clouds and the darker clouds are. And I'm using the brush in a circular motion to make this yellow, white moon. As you can see, I have applied some masking tape uh, so that we have a straight horizon line. Also, the canvas has dried and the yellow is more intense now that it's dried. I'm coming back in and helping to make those clouds uh, on top of our underpainting there. And I've made a light blue uh, gray color. Uh, the video has been sped up uh, so that it, we don't have a really long video. Um, and I'm coming back with the white gray, lighter white gray. Um, to add to the clouds so that, uh, as you'll notice, a cloud um, has varying shades uh, of the same base color usually, um, or in the same family. And um, it's the altering of those colors and, and considering uh, the effects of the light source on the clouds that helps make them appear more realistic. So it's a process of uh, going in and adding 
more darks in some areas, more lights in some areas, and layering your paint. And as you can see that that underpainting is showing up uh, in, under the white color um, so that we have uh, that richness of tone. As you can see, I'm applying the darker colors of the water, uh, and they're going to be darker toward the horizon line. But on the area directly in front of the moon, it's going to be lighter because we're going to have the light from the moon making that area appear lighter. So we're going to be alternating the lighter colors and the darker colors to create a um, wave-like appearance of the water. I've been using an 8 filbert and I've been using the darker blues and a pale blue um, with a very pale blue um, and more of a mid-range blue uh, to make the waves.
I'm marking out the area where the rocky cliff is and the colors used are raw umber, a blue green, and a little bit of white. To make the object, whatever it is, appear more three-dimensional, you'll want to have light and shadow sides. And so the area that is not in the direct moonlight is darker. And you can see that I'm using the palette knife now. And the palette knife hits high areas, the higher areas with some paint and um, it just really creates a more realistic effect of stone. We're using the same effect with the palette knife on the stones on the beach. We are um, making the area that is being touched by the moonlight lighter and the shadow side darker. And we're using shades of black, gray, white. I'm creating the wave now that is splashing up on the cliff and it's partially obscuring the moon. So it curls up and so that's what we're creating now.
I'm marking out where that big wave is that's coming in to shore. Remember when I was talking about his painting at the beginning of this video and I said that there were some beautiful gray uh, violets and yellow grays. I've mixed together some of the lavender colors and the yellow colors that I was seeing um, in the surf there and so I'm just laying down paint. Uh, I'm not blending it real well. I'm just laying down the shades that I see and they'll get mixed a little better um, as, as we watch this tutorial. You'll see how we mix them together. And I'm laying down the paint as I see them so that the yellow colors are further down in the surf. And I'm using a 8 or 10 flat head brush here. It seems to work better in this area. And um, I had been using previously a filbert brush and now I've switched over to the flat head. The surf is coming into the rocks that are laying on the beach and swirling around those rocks. So that's the effect that I'll be trying to create here. The base color has been darkened, um, made a little grayer uh, to create the shadow area.
I'm applying the very light yellow white to the top of the wave. This is the area that is being hit uh, by the moonlight. I'm applying some light blue in the areas that I'm seeing the light blue in the picture. and um, trying to demonstrate with my brush how the paint is pounding on the cliff and um, the rocks on shore. I'm further defining the wave in the background by tweaking um, the colors and shape of that wave.
the moon became a dark yellow as it dried and now I'm applying a lighter yellow. I was looking at the values and made a few adjustments. I made the wave in the background a little darker and I added a highlight on the moon so that you'll see that there is a white area in the middle of the moon and uh, it, I think, made it look better. I've made a very diluted mixture of light blue. I added some red to it, so it's kind of uh, got a lavender tint to it. Um, I added a touch of black to gray it, 
and then I added the water glycerin uh, mixture and so this is going to be like a wash over this uh, bottom portion of the wave here that's coming into the beach because it's a very thin mixture uh, the colors underneath it are going to show through uh, but it's going to make it look more cohesive and I'm going back and resetting those lightest highlights on the wave area I'm adding the vein-like structure that you see in waves. Uh, and then I'm going to loosely blend that so that it's not so defined. And then I'm coming back and reestablishing those dark shadow areas. Sometimes when the paint dries, it becomes lighter. Um, and or in the yellow that we had used earlier becomes darker and you have to go back and reestablish those, add another layer to it. I'm pleased with the result, and I hope you are as well. Thank you for watching, and if this video has helped you, don't forget to like.